In the Rust Belt in Ohio, where we're from, we don't got much. But ever since we were kids, we always had one thing to hold on to. I'm talking about speed. We fix up old muscle cars, get them back on a track, race them faster than ever. And the faster they are, the fatter the paycheck. Fat and Furious Rolling Thunder. What do you got here? Tommy beefs up a 77 Vega. Looks good already. What else do you want to do to it? To get it blazing at the track. We want to give it in the eights. Wow. Best way to punch up a car like that? Nitro. But when he takes the car to the next level... Fire this baby up. It could all blow up in his face. Ho, ho, ho! And when Andy chases a hot paycheck... I want somebody to build me a hot rod. I got about 30 grand. 30,000. And you have exactly a week. <laughs> Tommy gets heated. When you said a week, you should have said something. In a race against the clock... Chuck! Every second counts. If I could chop a banana in half with a card. Ever seen that done? Wait a minute. Here, put some glasses on. <laughs> Don't cut my button off. What? Oh, man! Hey, hey, hey. There it is. You guys definitely need less sugar intake. That was a banana. Jeff Gensey. Tommy. Nice How you meet. doing? George. How you doing, George? Good. Pleased, Pleased to meet you. you. What do you got here? This is my 1977 Vega. What's in it? Got a big block Chevy in it. 496, 60 over, 454 with a Stroker crankshaft in it. Ford 9 inch rear with 456 gear in the back. Yeah, that's good enough gear for it. Looks like it's done right. Yeah, we tried. <laughs> Does it run? Yeah, yeah. I had one of these a long time ago. Deal on a Chevy Vega. A lot of people consider this to be the worst car ever made, but very few compact cars are able to hold a big block engine like the Vega. So it became popular with the drag racers in the 70s and 80s. It's got a super lightweight body, and with the right adjustments under the hood, you can get this car flying down the track. Looks like uh, you guys got a pretty good amount of work done on it already. What else do you want to do to it? We heard you're the guy that come to you to make it go faster. We got it to run low tens, but we want to get it in the eights. You want to put this car in the eights? Wow. <laughs> uh, that's moving. Man, getting a car in the eights? That means you got to get the car up to about 150 miles per hour. We've had it out with a brand new motor in it the first time, and uh, it went 10 overs right off the trailer the first pass. We've done a few eight-second cars in the past, but we're talking about big muscle cars, not a tiny little compact car like the Vega. We might blow the doors off this thing if we get it in the eights. What are you looking to spend? Well, we've got about 17 grand to spend. Um, going into the eights, you know you're going to have to do brakes. We're going to have to go through the suspension. It's going to need a parachute. Eight seconds. That's 150 miles an hour. You're flying. Right. This is my philosophy on fast cars. I'll make it go as fast as you want. But with every dollar I spend to save a second off the track time, I'm spending $2 to upgrade all the safety features. I usually don't turn people away. You guys are local racers. Uh, I'm a racer. Uh, I understand the money. Uh, but there's no way I can do it for 17 grand. Uh, you know, 17 is really all we got as far as cash goes, but, you know, we do have the salvage yard. It's only about an hour away from here. If you can get it in the eights, you know, maybe we can work out some kind of credit deal on that and get some parts from us. 
Jeff and George is what Ohio racing is all about. A father and son who live and die for racing is what I love to see. This is a really tough call. Well, if you got complete motors, trannies and stuff that I can use, that sounds like a pretty good deal. I think we can work something out. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, no, thank you. Even though I'm not getting straight cash in this deal, getting free parts is as good as cash around here. But I still gotta be strategic on this build and try to hit that eight second number. this deal? I mean, what's going on? Yeah, we're going down to meet uh, Atomic Bob. Atomic Bomb? Bob. Bomb? Bob. B-O-B, -B Bob? Yeah, like the verb, Bob. Like you bob for apples. Oh, like the name Bob. Yeah, Bob. He's a pinstriper. Yeah. He details out cars and does real fine work. Right, yeah, I know. He's an artist. Yeah, all right. Atomic Bob. Okay. Tommy got a call from his pinstriper, Atomic Bob. Sounds like he wants us to build him a car. Pinstripers are like tattoo artists for cars. We don't really know much about what he wants, just that he wants us to meet him so he can describe it all in person. All right, this looks like the place, man. Tommy Bob? Yep. Steve McGranahan? How you doing? Andy Bovarnik? Good to meet you. Christmas nice Automotive? You. Nice cars, man. Yeah. I wish yours? they were mine. Uh, nah, they're customer cars. Oh, there's stuff from pinstripe in here. Yep. It's nice. nice. Yeah, it's nice. What can we help you with? I want somebody to build me a hot rod. Okay, I'm looking to have something comparable to this. I want a 51 Mercury, not a 54, not a 59. It's got to be a 51. I mean, it's been something I've been wanting for years. Hot rods are really popular in Ohio. Finding a 51 Merc should be a huge issue. But with an artistic guy like Bob, I'm more worried about what we have to do to it once we get it. I imagine there's more to it than that, right? Quite a bit more. Oh, boy. It's got to have wide whites. Absolutely got to have wide whites. Remember the old chrome reverse wheels? Yeah. Those look perfect. I want it on the ground. I want it low. If you could find something with a flathead motor in it, yeah, like the real deal flathead motor. All right. I don't know if you can pull it off. Flame throwers. I want it in a starlight purple. And I want pearl white flames. Not white. Pearl white. Flaming white. Purple flame. Yes. Just something that says I'm coming down the road. It's a long list. The good thing is, Bob knows what he wants. Bad thing is, he wants a lot. I heard him say flamethrowers. Did you hear him say flamethrowers? Oh, yeah. He said flamethrowers. What do you want this? How long do I have? Well, there's a, there's a big show coming up. You have about a week. No way we can do a week, Bob. No way. How much are we going to spend? I've seen that look on Andy's face before. I know where he's going with this. I got about 30 grand. 30,000. Yeah, 30,000. He hears that number, gets it in his head, ain't no stopping him. 30,000, I gotta get a 51 Merc. I gotta paint it. Don't do it, Andy. I gotta lower it. It's gotta be a flathead in it in a week. Please don't do it. You got it. We'll take care of it. And the words of Tommy Christmas, unstinking believable. You tell Tommy. Sure. Look, 30,000? 168 it. hours. I'll do it in a day. You can't change oil in a day. All right, brother, let's get this hood off. With this 77 Vega, I wasn't sure what we could do to make it run eight. It already has a big block Chevy under the hood which is a ton of motor for this car. Mm, I love the smell of racing fuel. Almost as good as bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then it hit me. Nitrous. Let's start running that nitrous line, get that nitrous bottle in. How's that? OK. All right, you got to drill a hole, run the line. Mm-hmm. If we're going to stick firm to our 17 grand budget, nitrous is the simplest way to add extra power to the car. I'm going in. Adding nitrous is like dousing a fire with lighter fluid. The second that nitrous oxide hits the combustion chamber, it breaks down into oxygen, which gives an instant kick to the car and gets it flying down the track. And if this Vega's doing tens already, the nitrous is going to get it to the eighth, no problem. Hey, Bob! Huh? Oh, boy. Can you... Can you pull my leg? What's the matter? Are you stuck? Well, I think so. <laughs> oh, oh. Get out of there. Okay. Uh, huh? Yep. Did you have a crap or something? Yeah. Dude. That reminds me.
buried me in the birth canal. Oh, <laughs> Break the news to him. Having the boss? What's up? How'd it go? It went good. His name Thomas Bob, that guy you sent us to? Bob. Bob, sorry. Bob. Went well. Well, what did he want? He wants a 51 Merc. That, that should be no problem. I know where there's a Merc already, so. He wants it painted, put flames on it. How much has he got to spend on it? That's the nice part. $30,000. Wow. 30 grand. Yep. All right. How long we got for this bill? Uh, I'm gonna go see if Chuck needs some help. Andy. Yeah. How much time I got on this build? Well, I, I just figured we could do it pretty quick. Get the car, lower it. Andy, how much time do I have on this build? He wants to be at a car show in a week. A week? What are you thinking? The paint alone is gonna take four or five days. Look, thirty thousand dollars. How much money? Hey, that... All you're thinking about is thirty thousand dollars. When you said a week, you should have said something. I did. I said yes. Uh, you know it's what? Thirty thousand dollars. Let's see if you can do it in a week. Coming up. Oh uh, yeah. Fire this baby up. Ho ho ho! The knife just kicks in, going down the track. This thing will grenade. Mercury Coop. Andy agreed to build a hot rod for a guy named Atomic Bob. Only issue is, we got a week to do it because Bob wants it for a car show. It should fit the bill, fix it up, everybody's happy. Yeah, Tommy was not too happy about that week deadline. But luckily, he knew about a guy selling a 51 Mercury Coop, which is the exact car Bob wants us to buy and customize. Yeah, this was at Greaser Avenue. A lot of the guys that came back from the war, this kind of car they hopped up. Hot Rodder's dream back then, man. If I could get under 15, we'll be good. That's a 1951. Yeah. Uh, that's older than you. Yeah, it's one of the few cars that were made before I was born. <laughs> what, did they, they ride dinosaurs before all that? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> all right, I think this left turn right here. Hey, Jerry. Hi. I know I'm Eddie. I heard Andy. about you. How you doing? Steve McGranahan. Steve, how you Meet doing? You, sir. I heard of you. Might have something we'd be interested in looking at for sale. Yeah. All right, Jay. Let's see what we got. Okay. Oh, now that's wow. That is a '51 Merc. Mercury Coupe is one of the most famous hot rods of all time. It became popular with do-it-yourself customizers right after World War II. A lot of young servicemen gained mechanical and metalworking skills in the military, which created a new wave of backyard mechanics that were eager to soup up cars. With a flathead V8 and sleek body style, it remains a staple in the hot rock community to this day. Rust Belt regional look, huh? Yeah, yeah. Nice, good taste. Jay, how long you've had this? About 12 years now. I had good intentions to redo it the way I wanted to, but with kids and college, other cars, why, it's just been neglected. Let me open it up here, take a look, okay? Yeah, go ahead. A little cleaned up, a few detailing here and there, a little interior work needs done. Flathead V8, right? Yep. All right. What are you asking for this beast? 20,000. 20,000. It's a good car. Mm-hmm. This car's a great buy. It's clean, there's not much work to do. Since we're on a time crunch, we need something that comes out of the box ready to go. I like the number nine. How about 9,000? No, That's a beautiful number. No. That's no. giving it away. Let's go for 18. Oh, 18. That is not low enough. Um, 13. I'm bumping high for you, man. 13. 13,000. This is like an old friend. Don't want to get rid of it. Car guys like Jay, sometimes they just want to know that their baby's going to be taken care of. So if he knows we're doing this car justice, he might be willing to come down on the price. So I'm going to put some money in this, to, to, you know, to make it look right in the way maybe even you want to. You probably wanted to make it look right. Well, I wanted to. I just never got around to it. Uh, if you do it right like you're supposed to, make it the show car that it should be, mm. you can have it for 14000 